Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome to Rugby M, it is the million pound game. We're outside, Lee. Who's going to win today? Lee! Lee, apparently. These lot of confident, Jonesy. Yep. Firstly, congratulations, mate, reaching a grand final again. Number eight for you, number eight. Well, I just told me, he wants me to get man at match, but he wants Cass to win. <laughs> what about that? Go on, Cass. Come on. Mate, it's, been, it's been a fantastic penultimate week to 2017. Really looking forward to today's game as well. It's, not quite got the same vibe as it, but we've been at the last two, yeah. and it always produces some drama. Um, and it's great to be back here at Lee Sports Village. Me, myself, John, Jones, Bishop, uh, getting <laughs> amongst the fans and all the young kids. It should be an epic day. Wagger, you're going to be yeah. taking next week to the grand final. The cast butts has got three cast coaches. You and Price, you're looking after them. How mental is it going to go in that cast end? Oh, it's going to be absolutely loose. We did fam cam the other night. They were absolutely going crazy. All the cast. The town will be behind them. It's going to be a great day at the grand final. We'll be there hosting the fan zone. But today, it's all about a million pound game. Let's go inside and meet the main man at the club, Derek Beaumont, and find out his plans, whether they win or they lose. But I think they're going to win. Are you confident of a win? I think they'll win. Go to Lee. You ready? Yeah, I'm going, uh, I'm going Lee for his win today. Right, let's go inside and see Derek. Recent history against Catalan. Um, has been a bit positive, but firstly, before we talk about Lee and Catalan, do you think Catalan as a team, do you think Super League can afford to lose the Catalan club out of the competition? No, 100% not, mate. I mean, I, I've got I've got two hats and I, so, you know, as, as the owner of Lee Centurions, 100% we're hell-bent on staying in Super League. We're desperate to do so, you know, that's what we're driven to achieving. Um, what really pains me is that the consequence of, of, of that, you know, elation, if you will, sees uh, Catalan go and I think it's madness I think it's absolutely madness that Super League is going to relegate Catalan and I even said to at the meeting yesterday you know we're, we're discussing what's the way forward if there's to be a different structure and I think that if that's going to be the case we should be brave enough to say well hang on a minute we're not actually going to do that because it's crazy to act against the best interests of your business and I don't think Super League relegating Catalan is acting in the best interests of Super League because if you look at the exposure it gives the game in, in a different country, if you look at the fact that it gives us a third Sky game every uh, fortnight, so you know the broadcasters, uh, what they get out of it, the fans absolutely love going there. You know, I enjoyed going there myself. So you know, I, despite you know, there's the there's the people that are saying the negativity because they don't bring uh, fans over here. But would if we was travelling to France every week, how many of our fans would go? So you know, you kind of understand that, and nothing's ever going to be perfect, is it? So you know, the, as long as the benefits outweigh the negatives, which I think in this case they do, and you know, it's such a game of fine margins. You know, I was talking to the guys from OKI yesterday. It was great to see them back. That. You know, they're, they're watching our result against Warrington, which was a two-point ball game in the balance to the last five minutes. And had we won that, then, you know, they're in a different position. And they could have been playing the million-pound game, two teams with 10 points. You know, it, it's mental, it's that close. The, the try with OKRA where they just beat us right at the end. So, you know, it, it's just impossible to know. And I just think they've probably created a potential disaster. How close were London? The, you know? I was speaking to Andrew Henderson last night about a different issue, but I said, you know what, well done this year. He's got coach of the year, and he said we were that close, that close against mate. Warrington, that close against Catalan. Those games go their way. Yeah. and They've played Catalan away, OKR away, and Warrington at home, right? which, which are, are currently tough, three, tough three Super League teams, because OKR's again. Yeah. The points difference was only minus nine. Minus nine off M3 games, unbelievable. Then, you know, I, I sent an email round before they played Witness. Everyone's talking about, you know, should there be parachutes and payments and different things like that. We were talking about everything and nothing's by any means decided. But I said, you need to consider what if you need two parachute payments if you go down that route? Because if London beat Witness, uh, Witness we have to go there and if we don't win, the million pound game's not, you know, there's two Super League sides getting relegated, one for sure and one could lose a million pound game. 
and that wouldn't have been taking anything away from uh, London, you know, because they have played well. So I don't think anyone's ever thought that all of this had happened. Next year, you've got Toronto coming in. They will play uh, a big part. They'll certainly be in that mix of the four. But could you have in that situation that there's two teams? You know, could it be that, let's say, it's Lee that get relegated and, and Toronto, and irrespective of who finishes top in the situation, that both sides are good enough in the middle eights to take two Super League shirts? It sounds to me like there's been a lot of talk and mm. there's a lot of, not confusion, but it's going to be a real difficult decision. Firstly, who makes the decision? So who actually decides to change the structure? And secondly, if it is a vote amongst people, do you think we just need a dictatorship? Do you think so somebody's got to be appointed a strong leader and say, you know what, let's put the faith in someone to get things done quicker? Every, organi every organisation needs a strong driver, a strong leader with courage in the convictions, who says how it's going to be and everybody pretty much dances to their tune. They can challenge it and put ideas through, but at the end of the day, no, that's what we're going to do. The difficulty you have, because the decision largely is made by the clubs because ultimately they own Super League Europe. So you've got 12 people who, you know, have all got two hats on, because as a director of, of um, a business, you have a legal responsibility to act in the best interests of that business. That, 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 the consequences which can be as grave as going to prison, right, in, you know, in extreme circumstances. So, but you, you're duty bound to do that, irrespective of whether you own it outright or not. You've got to act in, in its best interest. Now, in that situation, you've also got your, your heart of what's the best for the game. Now, you might actually think that what is best to vote for for the game isn't actually in your best interest as a club. So if we take, for example, say a parachute payment as an argument, say, and that the clubs had to take less money to, to protect another club, then you're acting against the best interests of your, your own club. club. Uh, but you're acting in the best interest of the game. So what, what that presents is, it presents a difficulty of 12 people agreeing to the same thing. But ultimately, if and as and when they do, or a majority does, the RFL has to, uh, you know, has to ratify um, that decision. Um, and, and we have also got to take into account that there's clubs outside of Super League, which is where we came from in the championship with lots of ambition. Um, you know, and, and some with less ambition. So, but the game has to survive uh, as well as Super League. Is that being tabled um, that every Super League club should have a reserve team? Uh, I think we're trying to build towards that, yeah. and and there's a there's a reserves competition next year, and and the teams that have expressed an interest in joining it, so that's being put together. Uh, for me, I think ultimately it, it should be mandatory. I also think it should be mandatory that you have an academy yeah. as well certainly before you can spend more on the salary cap so you know the marquees and things like that i don't think you should be able to spend your money in that way um at the cost of uh, an academy or, or your structure i think that has to be right your, your stadium has to be right your academy and your structure has to be right then if you've still got some brass and you want to go over the top on a marquee or not then fine but we've got to ultimately for me here we have to be able to grow our own players and we've got the perfect feeding ground for it with the amateur clubs around here. Yeah, some good clubs, isn't there? Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's, there's an interesting one I'll put out here for you now. The first team at Lee East have got relegated this year. The first team at Lee Miners have got relegated this year, which is the two biggest amateur clubs in the town. <laughs> and I'm sat here shaking like a dog about to drop it, it, its back, thinking we can't have the professional team go out as well. You know, that's how, how devastating it is. But... The, whilst the first teams are the, are the face of, a, of, of those two amateur clubs, it's what's underneath them that's the bigger yeah. picture, the, the kids that they bring through. Goldburn, uh, Parkside Pirates were, were my lab players as well, Culture for Eagles, uh, Abbott and Dragons, West Art and Lions. So, you know, there's a lot of good clubs around this area and I want to get where ultimately people like Mickey Iam who are Lee through and through come right through it are bringing those kids in uh, through your scholarships like the big clubs do and I make no secret about saying I'd love in 10 years time to be able to be something remotely close to what we're gonna in that yeah. in that respect or, or a lead or you know that's that's got to be the goal for the sport the thing I get most out of this club right, yeah. is the smiles that I see on people's faces the, the work we can do with charities yeah you know I've got a guy in my in my box as a guest this week you know 
he's I went to somebody asked me would I go to Tesco's uh, and with a player, he's, for some reason, he, he wanted me there more than a player. He just he's mad on me. Seventy years old, big person, old, yeah, retiring, and I thought oh, I was a bit flattering. Of course, I'll go, and, yeah. I, and I'd never turn anything down. And, and off I went. We took the guy a ball, yeah. and he's enjoying that game from my box. He's seventy year old, so that is great for me. Ultimately, for me, what I have got here is I've got seventeen guys that when they get picked, they'll cross that white line who care deeply about this place. Yeah. They care about each other, they care about me, they care about the fans, they care about this town crest here, right? And they deeply, deeply want to see Lee still in Super League because collectively I've got 17 people with that utmost desire that want to still be around this club. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, spec the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome to part two. I'm joined by the legend, Shandy Bass from Lee. I've heard a lot about you, Shandy. I'm married to Lee, lass. My father-in-law lives around the corner at Lee Cricket Club. How are you feeling? Score prediction for today's game against Catalan? I think we can beat these, and we can beat them like we did, uh, we can, like we did at Hilton Park. We can beat St. Helens at 12 uh, forward, and that ring conditions. We can beat Catalan today in there. How nervous are you? Talk to me about your emotions, Ooh, Shandy. Well, I'm not nervous. I just think we can go out there and do that today. We can beat them. And we can. If you beat them, what are you doing tonight? Are you going to hit the town? I'll definitely be in the town. <laughs> oh, definitely. Right, Shandy, we're going to catch up with James Clare and Ben Crooks. What do you think of them two players, Shandy? Well, I think they're two solid players. I think they'll be all right today. I'm all, I think we need some like that on park today. This is Lee's K2 teammates. James Clare, 28, Sticks, or the Viking. Ben Crooks, three. Legends, lad. <laughs> Lee Crooks is lad. Lee Crooks is lad. <laughs> we ain't got none of them, have we? <laughs> no. We've got Greg a load. Greg McNally, surely. Greg McNally, the cat. The cat. Can, can shift some iron on that bike, can't he? Can. Yeah, he can. <laughs> <laughs> Greg McNally again. <laughs> He's up there with a few of these, the, doesn't he? The worst trainer I've ever seen. Ooh, in fact, Curtis Norton. Yeah, yeah, Curtis yeah. Norton. It's a training session, that boy. We call him the Dementor, just because he just sucks your life and soul family. every single day. <laughs> he drains me. I get in car him every day and I feel like today's going to be a great we day. We managed to get the physio staff calling him Dementor now as well. He is. He just, he just takes everything Zappy. away from me. Zappy. I've got nothing to give anymore. <laughs> We've got a few of them yeah. <laughs> there every week, There's making coffees and giving it to them. Probably Ryan Hampshire, it's got to yeah, be. Yeah, he's, he's right up there, isn't he, Rocky? He's only player that he don't get picked, but he just says, please put me out wing, I want to play, mate. That's yeah. what he says every week. Texas, I will play absolutely anyway. Just put selfies in of him and his mate Jukes here. He's gone for a coffee. Just at Costa again with Jukes here. Play every week. I always wondered why he likes driving on his own, though, doesn't he? Oh, I'm driving on my own, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing some after over there. What are you doing? Oh, I don't know, I don't mind. You know, he, he goes in for a coffee and he comes out and he's like wiping his face and stuff like that. I'm like, what's up? I'll just fill my coffee down with Jim, mate. Not fair play if it gets you in team. <laughs> Can we change questions who's most likely to leave for a guy? Jamie Acton, Jamie definitely. Acton. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's going to go on with a bloke, okay, it's him. I question him, you know. <laughs> Something about him. I just don't like it. I feel uncomfortable. I wait for him to finish his shower before I go in for one. I don't want to go with any of them. <laughs> Can I go by my sen? <laughs> me and you, me and you. Just go. Me and Chris, right, we go. Yeah. I'm right left, don't we? Just like everyone else off, like we don't want to wait the train. Just lift each other up. Yeah. Put everyone else down, lift each other up. Stand yeah. on the backs of others, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ryan Hampshire, it's got yeah, a bit. Yeah. He's just swiping left for days. I actually can't get a word out of him, because he's just glued like that. What are you doing, Rocky? Nothing. What is his arm just doing this all the time? What are you on? He's oh. always on this thing called Facebook. Grindr as well. I don't know what that's about, but he just said it's a new app, Girls Only Tinder or something. I've never done it. His dad mentioned it to me, Grindr, but I still don't know what it is. <laughs> he likes it, whatever it is. Ready? He's yeah, only ready. Lee with a picture of his face on the side of a pub. You know, he's got shirts up in every single amateur club round here as well. He's never even played for him. He just takes his shirt and says, put that up on your wall, please. I can pretend. <laughs> I love Lee's it. Centurion, isn't he? Mr. Lee. But then Mickey, I am one of our own, isn't he? Yeah. Everybody loves Mickey. So but then much, again... So much that we brush ready after us. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just get Mickey confused because we've got about 15 bald people in our team. You can never remember which one's which. <laughs> we've got a few. Like off once, what are you, the baldies? <laughs> <laughs> it goes in, as goes for the. <laughs> have you ever seen a French, per French person have a. <laughs> he op mate, we, we opened the door on him. He stood, stood on the rim of the toilet, squatting over it because he do not have a toilet seat at home. He's got one of them holes in the floor at home. So he says he can't sit down. He likes to like stand on the toilet. So he squats over the toilet, talks to everyone while we're trying to get a shower. So we jump out. Then he jumps in, has a quick wash, goes to sinks, shaves all his. <laughs> back in. <laughs> <laughs> you pubes get me. You must not. Time, because, oh, do you, want, you want to borrow? <laughs> you, want, you want to borrow? <laughs> no respect. <laughs> no, no respect. You open door, no respect. <laughs> this weekend, you're up against a formidable player, yeah. Luke Gale. Yeah, sensational. We took him down to Yorkshire menswear to get fitted for his Man of Steel suit. Yep. We'll see him in part four at the Man of Steel Awards, but. What a player and what a performance after what he's been through. Well, I hope he's suited up well because I think he's going to go up and collect it. Certainly, uh, it gets my vote and I did vote for him, I don't mind saying. But what really impressed me, Simo, is when he had to kick that penalty goal when the hooter had gone, like he'd done it a million times, it was like a training field kick, absolutely nailed it, just jogged off. And then he, he had the nerve to come up later on with that winning drop goal. It was just, for what he'd been through, he'd had an organ removed, remember? Three, less than three an, organ. an organ. It's an appendix, an organ. An organ. It's an organ <laughs> in, inside your body. I don't know how they've got a keyhole. It must have been a big keyhole. Must have liquidised it and sucked it out through a straw. But whatever they did, he was like a superhero. And he got a superhero's welcome. And I'm sure he'll want to capitalise on that in the grand final. Outstanding. Let's go to Yorkshire Menswear, meet Chris Kerber and get fitted up for our Man of Steel suits. Come down for the suit fitting for Man of Steel. Uh, going to get swagged up by Chris from Yorkshire Menswear. Uh, but I wanted to take you back to 2014. It's it's never easy to talk about um, losing people who we love. And then when I, I'm working at Bulls as a match day announcer, and it was all kind of jovial and fun. And one day, he won, obviously, just sadly passed away. And I spoke to you a few days later, and you said to me you wanted to become everything you could be within rugby in her memory and I wondered after last night and going into this week if, if obviously you started to realise your potential and obviously if how that meant to you with your mum and stuff. Yeah massively mate, um, obviously tragic, tragic um, when, when when you lose anyone like you say any loved one and um, you just, it kind of puts things into perspective really and um, my mum were a massive, massive part of my rugby career, it's probably where I am today is all because of my mum and um, she used to, I used to train four times a week being four a kid. Four times a week? Yeah, well, two at Middleton and then probably two at Leeds from being found it, uh, scholarships under 12 to yeah. under 16s and she she had to really sacrifice her life for to take me to rugby. Um, and yeah, just going going back to that, that part of my life, um, real tough mate and, and like you said, nights like, like last night, um, make it all worthwhile and, and um, she will be proud obviously she can't be there me um, all my family were there last night and um, I know she's there in spirit and stuff like that but yeah massive like like, like last night make it make it all worthwhile and and you kind of do everything you can in your power to 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 do it for her really I know we, you spoke about Richie yeah Richie spoke about yeah, yeah, Richie spoke same. really well to Jonesy about it down at Warrington and touched a lot of people because a lot of people are related to it they've obviously been through the same 
a lad, Paul, uh, I know he watches the show, he, he lost his dad recently, who were a top Rhinos fan, top bloke, and he sent us some really nice comments about some stuff me and Jonesy did for him. And I think it's it's something, what, unfortunately, we're all going to have to go through at one point in our life. And as a parent, as we are now, I, I you know, it makes it even more, is you know, when you feel that stuff. The, the, I think that's the rugby league. Rugby league in, the best thing for me was, I think uh, I went to play Warrington on the Sunday, um, and it happened early hours Sunday morning. I never played that game, spoke to boys, the boys all know, knew. Um, but I just basically wanted to get into rugby as fast as I can. I think I had, I think I had Monday off, and then back in with boys, I said, look boys, don't treat me any different. Just, I, I just the best thing for me was getting into rugby, and I think um, I'm sure Richie would have said the the exact same thing. Um, rugby league brings you together, and it's it, that that community, and and that was the best thing for me, just getting him it back in with lads and getting back into the swing of it. Really, I think rugby league. Um, what I've seen working in rugby, it's such a caring sport, and, uh, and there's so much help now with rugby league cares and other organisations. Lizzie's done some great work, obviously since Danny's tra tragic passing. Um, to help people, help people, amateur people, fans, professionals. There's a lot of support out there, and it's a game that's really started to come together. I think Luke Campbell is doing some amazing yeah, work, um, and Stevie Ward with his mentality as well. It's it's a really caring sport. It is massively, mate. And um, no, like like I say, the best thing for me was getting amongst the boys and and, and even the fans. Um, the fans had, had come in. Gear, gear, cuddle, and stuff like that. No, it, it that 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 were what really helped me really get through it. Mate, best of luck this week, and I know she'll be looking down on you, and I know your little girl will be looking into her daddy's eyes, proud as punch. She definitely will, mate. Look, it's a real exciting week, and uh, I can't wait to uh, to walk her out onto the Old Trafford pitch. Whether it's power station, factory, or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, spec the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome to part three, rugby um, and it's, it's kind of a dead atmosphere. It is a little bit, but it's not too bad. I think the league supporters are, are quite loyal they're staying behind, they're clapping the players and uh, they're still singing the song, so they'll be back. They've been uh, a great club for the last four or five years, Simo, and this will be another learning experience for them. Catalan winning today. We're going to catch a few of the Lee players and uh, a few of the Catalan boys and find out how they're feeling now, the million pound game, you know, how it's going to affect them and how, how they're feeling about it all. It's what it is, isn't it? We all know the rules, start of the season. I was in that middle age myself last year, I know how difficult it is. Thankfully, I wanted a million pound game, but you know, pressure's really tall tonight. And unfortunately for Lee, it means uh, a season down in the Championship. But for Catalan, it's another year in Super League, and it is big business for the game. Right, when to catch up with some players and straight outside for Waggers, fan camp. I can only imagine how disappointed you must feel now and the weight of responsibility sometimes. But adversity happens, and I know myself you can bounce back a little bit stronger. But what will you take from the season, Mickey? No, I will. We were trying to take the positives, like, you know, the, the defeats on our first winning Super League at all FC away. Yeah. You know, we pushed you guys close twice at Leeds and put 50 on our neighbours at Wigan. You know, there's, there's been some good some good results. You no, know, nil, nil Telford, Huddersfield here. Absolutely. Big Saints, Huddersfield. We know we can, we know we can do it. But um, end of the day, as you know, mate, you, you've got to do it for week after week and, yeah. and, and, you know, eight for 18 minutes. So, um, not to be, mate, we're, like Derek said, we're on, we're on a long journey. We just veered off. We just veered off track, and we do our best to get back on, mate. I can see how emotional it is for you right now. How are you feeling? Out? Where's the weight lie on your shoulders? Yeah, I just feel like I've let everybody down. I do. You know, I, I'm proud to captain my hometown club. You know, as, as you've done, mate. And um, yeah. when you, you know, and it's you lose a cup final, it's devastating. But you lose this cup final, yeah, you're going down the league, and I, yeah. you know, I, I just feel like I've let everybody down, and um, you know, it's. Live to fight another day, I suppose. We'll, we'll get back to the drawing board. And I'm sure everybody in the red and white shirt will know that Mikhail um, puts his life and soul into that league club and uh, he's given everything you've got. Sometimes it's just not coherent, it doesn't happen, but we've seen OKR bounce straight back up. Can Lee do that next year? Can you give him a little bit of hope? Yeah, you know, we've got a, we've got a great squad here. And it's just We've just got to find that consistency and, you know, we'll, we'll drop down the league and, you know, we'll, still, we'll stay full time. We'll probably recruit a few more and, 
you know, we'll, 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 you know, we'll do it the hard way and get back up and hopefully we'll get up and stay up. So, yeah, stick with us. This crowd, you know, the fans have been great all year and we've let you down badly, but, um, you know, stick with us and we'll, we'll come good. Jay's literally playing for you, for your livelihood, for your, for your mortgage, for your family. Everything on the line today. How was it out on the pitch, mate? Lee were, uh, Lee were incredible. I mean, we've, we've played them four times this year and we know how tough they are. And, you know, they put us in tough spot to start off with and the crowd's behind them. And, mate, I'm really just proud of our boys. But, you know, I feel for Lee, I feel for the club. And, you know, if, if we can show, show any kind of support we can as a club, we'd love to help them out, you know. I mean, we've got a good crowd here today. I heard on Sky Sports yesterday, you know, them talking about the game. And, you know, I, was, I, was, I wasn't in this position last year and I didn't know how what how players would feel and now being in this position you know it's it's tough and i wish i don't wish it upon any player any club to be in this position but that's that's the way the rule is and you know i think lee will bounce back and we'll see how, what uh, evolves for the super league for the years to come the dragons it's so important for the region we've been there this year with david Forty. his business might literally have been over today Callan sports stores it affects the whole economy over there absolutely affects the economy and I mean, I think everyone, every club, every English club puts a mark and, you know, puts an X and when they play the Catalans because they want to come down, it's, they do a bit of a holiday, they support their team and, you know, they bring a, a, an atmosphere at Brutus, which is awesome and, you know, to see, you know, and for that not to be there next year, like it hasn't happened, you know, it would have been crucial for, like you said, the business, the economy and the region. We rely on so much on, on being in Super League and, and so do the boys. Yeah, it's like you get in with the boys. You've got another year. At the Dragons, we'll see you next year, mate. Yeah, in the thanks. Super League. Yeah, cheers. Thanks very much. The Catalan uh, club brings so much uh, strength to the local uh, economy mm. in Perpignan and in Cannes and, and in Barcelona and Lorette. Mm. It, it's so important. Uh, the fans coming over, the trips, and it, it's, it, it's it's a really strong franchise w within the Super League system. Yeah, and I think that's that's why a lot of uh, English people around rugby league uh, love Catalans, and because it's a uh, it's uh, some team exotic in in our competition, and you know for, for all the fans to come for for a big weekend in in Perpignan, but also as you say on the Costa Brava and Barcelona, and uh, it's good the politics, the, the French politics and the Catalan uh, politics should help us more than what they they do because people can can watch us uh, in Australia too. So it's a, it's a good image, it's a good advertising for our, our city and our country. Are you going to be uh, bringing a few new players into the club, looking to strengthen? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Steve arrived a few months ago, and uh, for sure, it has been tough for him to work with uh, with a group of players, maybe a, a short squad. And now we have to work with him for for the next three years, and we need to to reinforce our squad for sure. Uh, we have a lot of to do, a lot of fight to do, but. Uh, it's, it's not only a, a club, you know, it's a, it's a region, it's a country of rugby league and we need to be stronger than what we, uh, we've we been uh, this year. Let's go to work! Let's go to work! Let's go to work. UK Red Fire and Security Fan Camp! Unbelievable! The Castleford and the Super League Grand Final for the first time! The singing Sweet Caroline in the world of road end. I'm joined by Caspan. What's your name? Logan Dunford. Logan, talk to me about the game. Did you think when Centella scored in the corner, Ryan Morgan, the game was over? Yes. Yeah. Oh, the Tigers have done it! Old Town Club, Super League Grand Final. Next Sunday, who will it be? Will it be Leeds? Will it be Hull? <laughs> Super League Grand Final. We beat him and we, go, we lost out one. Absolutely amazing. We won the f***ing league and... We'll bleep it out! Bleep this guy is either speechless or he's had 25 points. What a guy! Yeah. Grand final. Get him! Still loads of cast fans knocking about well the road end. Michael Shannon's doing a spin. Grand final to... They're buzzing! They're still buzzing, they're still coming out of the ground! There's gonna be a party in cast tonight! Get round to my house, we're partying tonight! <laughs> what a that! Right, I found a young cast Tigers fan, easily the best dress, can I try it on? Does <laughs> it fit? Does it fit? You'll get pulled by the police over there. No, oh yeah! <laughs> 
They're laughing, but this guy's even been crying tonight. We're going to do it. Yeah. We did it. Come on. We've done it. Oh, Castaway. Oh, Castaway. Oh, Castaway. Guys. Nice, bagger. I'm going to do a simo. If Cass Tigers win the grand final, I will get a tattoo. Tweet to Ruby M where you want me to have it. Obviously not on show. <laughs> I love you, Kim. Love the wife. It's up to the wife when I have a tattoo. I will get it, though. I promise. Cass win the grand final. I'm having a tattoo. Oh, Cass are Oh, Cass are UK Red Fire and Security fan cam. Last time I saw this man, they were crying at the semi final. Ben, Ben, I'm, you're I'm, not crying tonight. No, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. Are you going to Old Trafford next week? Maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. <laughs> maybe. Plastic fan. We got a plastic fan. We can talk to me about next week. Grand final. 50, on the day. 50 50. We can do it. It's Cass, so. oh. <laughs> It's all right. Can't it's not live. It. We can do that. He's lost his voice. He's happy he's lost his voice. What's your name, Paul? Uh, Paul. Paul, how many years have you been watching Rhinos? Um, well, I'm, yeah, it's, it's 50, 56. 56. 56 years. Very emotional fan cam this week. Normally, I'm running around naked, everyone's cheering, but both sets of fans really didn't want any of this to happen. Another, another exciting million pound game, uh, but, but I've, I've been relegated at Casford. As a player, I know what it means. I was there crying like Mick Hammer on the field. Uh, relegated from Super League today. Uh, talk to me about your feelings and uh, this year so far since promotion. Um, we win some, we lose some. Today, we've lost it. We're, we should have won it, but it's hard, isn't it? My name's Kevin O'Donnell. I've supported Lee since I was 16. I'm now 54 years of age. Supported all my life. No other club will ever come near to Lee Centurions. I like it. Lee Centurions today has played well in that first half, second half. The RFL has just shown exactly what they're capable of doing. Everything totally went against Lee. I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, emotion. Just devastated. Mate, we'll get out, we'll get out. This is what rugby league's about. But well done to Catalans. You'll be back, you'll be back. You'll be back. Tough. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry. Welcome back to part four here at BAM. We're at the Monastery in Manchester for the Steve Prescott Man of Steel and now it's time to meet the winners of all the prestigious awards and get to hear their thoughts fresh right here on Rugby. Alex Wormsley, top meter maker, 2017 mate, you've had an outstanding season personally and now the focus has got to be on England. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I've really enjoyed my year this year, it's, you know, I feel like I've got back to my best somewhat and um, you know, I'm you know, really grateful to be stood here with, the, with this award. Yeah. And, I knew. It's been a fantastic year. I reckon you were the best team in the semi-finals. Even though this year you've been a bit hit and miss, but in those, out of the four teams, you probably played the best out of that game, missing out by the whisker. Yeah, and do you know what, it probably makes it feel a little bit worse. And listen, you know, I, I spoke to a few of the cast boys tonight and I feel we're playing against, you know, Destiny. I think that there was always Destiny to get to the grand final. They've been by far the best team all year. And, you know, as good as it was for me and, and the boys, I, it was probably a little bit of justice that they got there in the end, I think. As, as any rugby league fan, they've, they've been amazing and, um, you know, um, they've got a big game Saturday and I, I reckon they'll probably go on and win it. The best thing, I think, though, the thing that got you through the defeat, when I came outside, you were cuddling baby Atticus, sat with Simone, your beautiful missus, who was here tonight with you. It's the family unit you've created this year, thanks to yourself and Simone. It's going to get you through some really tough times ahead. Yeah, and, and listen, you know, as 
sport's amazing and it's a beautiful thing and I'm really grateful to be here now for the sport and rugby league but um, you know there's a few things what, what come out on top and obviously family and and you know I'm a little boy now it, it, you know yourself what, what it is what it's like to be yeah. a father and I've been blessed this you know recently to, to become one as well and yeah listen you know as tough as it was Thursday you know holding him in my hands you know made all the difference coach of the year Johnny Cash I mean <laughs> Daryl Fowl, this <laughs> looks outstanding mate black <laughs> on black you pulled yeah. it off tonight, mate. It's yeah. your missus who sorted this out, isn't it? Well, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't get a, a, a dicky ball that uh, was totally cast colours, but it's about as close as it got, so that's what I went with. We spoke the other day, and you, you said it's all about this weekend now. It's you know what, it's been a great achievement so far, but really, if this year's going to be special, you need to get the win. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, I think this year's been special anyway. If you yeah. want to make it extra special, then yeah. you know, it's grand final. It's uh, it's an opportunity that doesn't come around too often. You know, I, I was I was in one 20 years ago. You know, oh, man, uh, does yeah. it feel weird? Well, it's does it strange, feel 20 uh, years? Yeah, it's, well, it's 19, but it's yeah, pretty much 20 years, you know, and, and I haven't been in another one since. I've been in uh, championship grand finals, but I mean, you've got to take the opportunities, haven't you, yeah. when they come, and it's a big opportunity for us. We. We just need to deliver on a on a big night, and you know, calm heads. I think we've shown some some real composure and quality across the season, and and this is the time for it um, all over again. You could become the most successful club, uh, uh, the most successful coach at Castleford if you win this weekend. Otherwise, you'll still be behind Paul McShane, who's <laughs> had three promotions in three years, yeah. as he told me the other day, and he says, well, you know what? If Pally don't win, I'm here waiting. Yeah. He's, well, he's got his eyes I'll, on the I'll, prize. I'll, I'll, I'll give him this tomorrow <laughs> and then he, he, he might settle down a little bit. Young player of the year, 2017, the one and only Oli Gildart. You've got massive shoes to step into because your dad's a legend. Yeah, obviously it's massive. You know, my, you know, my dad's been in some big games. Yeah. And he's been in some of the greatest teams. So, um, yeah, it's going to be hard work to try and do what he's done, but I don't think he ever got one of these. So, Mate, it must, it's some great players who's have this award and you look down that list you're in some good company <laughs> really good company yeah, I, I set it up though you know you, you look at the list and you know they've gone on to have massive careers in super league and you know hopefully i can can follow their footsteps now Outstanding! I'm so happy for you because we've been speaking about it for a lot because you've got goal for three times on the bounce. You hadn't been nominated for this. What does it mean this year? Not only to be nominated, but but to pick it up as well. Yeah, um, just sat down on that top table tonight. Felt felt amazing before the awards even started. Um, sat next to Zach Albert Kelly. Um, no, look, it was a great honour, and and when he when he read my name out, it felt it, it felt just one I'm I'm proud of really. Do you know what I mean? That proud. He's super competitive, and I know if Zach or Albie had won it, he'd have turned that table over and walked <laughs> clean out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have gone that far, but I'd have been close. <laughs> no, look, to be fair, Zach was first one to congratulate yeah. me, and and Zach's been amazing this year, and so has Albert, and and I would have done the same to him, to be honest. <laughs> I know you think different, but. Uh, Mate, your little girl's probably too young to, to understand, really. Mm. But it's, your name's going to be on a very special trophy for a very long time, next to some real Castleford legends. In, in Mick Morgan, who's won it, I know it's not for Castleford, but yeah. he's a Castle legend. Obviously, Valsey, Rangy, and Clarkie. 
Uh, they mentioned up there that the last two minutes steel for cast have been sold on for profit. You know, I think I can see you see money bags. <laughs> I think you're thinking, why well, I've got a few quid. But <laughs> in realistic, you're not going anywhere because you're at a really special club in a really special time in their existence. Yeah, I just signed a, a, a long deal a year ago. And um, like you say, we're just out of a journey now. We've got a great side and and hopefully it's uh, it's the first first trophy of many. Um, obviously, one league, league leaders. We're playing the grand final on Saturday, and uh, I, I can see there being more silverware on the horizon as well. One person who can't be here tonight, who will be looking down with real pride, your mum. And it's, I know you, we had a chat about it the other day, and you dedicated all you do for her. But you, your dad and the rest of your family are going to be so proud when they get to all that this week. No, definitely. My aunt is already already organised. I've had text through saying um, we're going out for dinner tomorrow night. So. Um, no, look, yeah, like you say, mum can't be here tonight, but I know she's she's watching down, and like you say, I'd, she, I'm in this position now because of her. Um, she used to drive me everywhere, training four times a week, um, so I do dedicate a lot to her, and uh, like I say, I won't be here, so uh, she can't be here tonight, but I know my dad will be proud as well. I think my dad were gutted he didn't come, to be honest. I, I, didn't, didn't bring I didn't invite him. him. I don't believe I didn't you didn't bring your dad. Yeah, <laughs> he'll, be dev- bad. he'll be devastated about that, to be honest, but... Um, no, I, I'm, I'm sure I'll be proud of that one. Mate, you're making waves as well because Adidas have sent you boots. They haven't done it for another player like for years and years and years. That's because uh, I've got a good salesman in you. No, one or two. <laughs> uh, you've got your Yorkshire men's wear suit on, mate. It's, it's all about growing the brands and getting some sponsorship and, and growing the players as brands as well. And it's really important if we're going to go to the game. No, yes, yeah, Simon, like you say, it's, it's you that's been driving that, that force. And like you say, Chris tonight is he's made us look well, hasn't he? Down at Yorkshire Men's Way. Dapper, dapper. <laughs> but if it's all for not, I'm not saying it's all for nothing. It's been a great year for clubs. We can get a for you. But if you don't win on Saturday, it's really going to just take the sheen off. It, you've got to get this win, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, look, we we're 80 minutes away from a grand final. There's a lot of competitive lads in our team, and there's a lot of hunger as well. So uh, myself included. Look, we we know we're 80 minutes away. And I'm sure it'll be a great spectacle, and and it's one we wanna we wanna win. Two big projects still to go on the hit list that we set out before: Grand Final, World Cup. Confident above. Yeah, look, I, you're not gonna ask me which question that question no, again. We'll ask you that um, which is best to win? Um, I'll probably tell you after the next couple. But no, look, it's I haven't even thought about World Cup yet. That's it for Man of Steel Awards. I'm here with the main man himself. Good luck, and hopefully we're next week we're celebrating a win with either Jonesy or with Gailey. You know, we've got friends in both camps right here at Rugby M. Join us for a grand final special as we host the fan park and obviously all the match day action from the grand final this year. The biggest night of the Super League year. Whether it's power station, factory or stadium, covering installation or maintenance, SPEC, the specialist power contractor to industry.